Hello, thanks for tuning in to today's message from Calvary in Lake Havasu City, Arizona. We are on week three of our series about our values. Today's message is all about transparent living. The scripture we'll be looking at is found in 1 John chapter 1, verses 7 through 9. You can access the Life Notes by visiting calvaryaz.com forward slash Life Notes. Now, here is Pastor Chad Garrison. I invite you to take a seat and grab your Bible or your Bible app and turn to 1 John chapter 1. 1 John, Gospel, uh, Gospel of John is in the front of the New Testament. The letter of 1 John is way in the back. And if uh, you're here and you don't have a Bible with you or a Bible app on your device, that's fine. Grab one of the Bibles and the seats around you and turn to page 1,210, 1,210, way in the back, almost to Revelation. And you'll be able to follow along with us uh, in 1 John chapter 1. Uh, and, and if you don't have a Bible and you're in the room then, and you want a Bible, take one with you. It is our gift to you. We want you to have God's Word, read God's Word. If you're joining us online and you don't have a Bible and you want one, then um, message us and we will get you a Bible. Uh, you can uh, message a service host. You can email us at calvaryaz.com and we'll get a Bible to you because we know if you read and apply God's Word, God will change your life. Hey, I uh, just got to take a moment and celebrate because last weekend we celebrated 69 baptisms. <laughs> And uh, I mean, look, that, that's, what we're, that's what we're all about, right? I mean, that's what we do this for, is to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. And baptism is us telling the world that we're unashamed followers of Jesus. And I just praise God that we had 69 more people uh, just get in the waters and say, hey, I don't care who's watching or who sees, but I am changed by the life-saving power of Jesus. And, and so, uh, man, I just praise God for that. Uh, and, uh, and by the way, that wasn't like any church I attended growing up. And I attended church all the time growing up. Anybody with me? Any? Okay, oh, I see those hands. I feel your pain. Because uh, we went, <laughs> look, we went Sunday morning. We went Sunday night. We went Wednesday night. We went to every special occasion thing, a revival, a musical, a training. I mean, we were there all the time, okay? Anybody have that kind of experience growing up? Okay, less hands, but I really, really feel your pain. Uh, look, I mean, I remember, I, I, as, a, as a, a person before Calvary, I've been a part of six churches. Uh, I remember four of them. Uh, growing up, uh, there, there, I was a part of one in Kentucky, two in North Carolina, two in Illinois, and one in Arizona, really, uh, that we uh, attended before I became an adult. We actually changed houses more than we changed churches. I mean, I lived in 15 houses in 18 years. We went to six churches in that time. I served on staff of four churches before Calvary in three different states, two in Arizona, one in Kentucky, one in Georgia. So I understand church culture, especially Baptist church culture, okay? I, I get it. And, uh, and one of the dysfunctions uh, of church growing up is this group understanding that we all must hide. We're not going to hide. Don't let anyone know your business. Don't let anyone know your failings or your sins. Not if you want respect, I mean, because we went to church all dressed up, pretending to be perfect, happy families, right? I mean, we, and then we went home and lived very different real lives. Because everyone kept secret. Because if, you, if people knew that you failed, you were judged, uh, right? They're going to judge you. They're going to marginalize you. Oh, you can't serve on that committee. You can't lead in church. You can't teach the kids. Look what you did, and they're definitely going to gossip about you. I mean, they're going to call it, you know, prayer, but they're going to gossip. Because they're going to go like, oh, hey, I'm just calling to share with you, you know, what happened in this person's life and tell you all about it so that we can feel much better about ourselves. And, uh, and, and so they're going to do that. And, and uh, I remember being told by my parents many times, okay, don't tell anybody our business. Don't tell anybody our stuff. And I was like, okay, because I was a kid. And I was like, okay. <laughs> now, the truth is, we didn't have any stuff. I mean, look, our family was boring. I mean, we didn't have anything to really hide. I mean, there was no bodies buried. There was no secret affairs. There was no, you know, weird stuff going on. I mean, you know, 
But we were taught to hide. And if you grew up going to church, you probably felt some of those same tendencies. It, it kind of felt like we were all living in the Wizard of Oz, paying no attention to the man behind the curtain. Right? We're just facades of, of who we really were. And, and here's the thing, and this is the temptation that we still fight and we still face every single day. We all wanted to appear better than we were. We wanted people to look at us and think that we were better than we actually were. We wanted them to think our marriages were better than they were, our families were better than they were, our children were better than they were. Uh, we wanted them to think that our lives were better than they looked. By the way, this is still a societal issue. That's why social media is what it is. There are people who take trips to go places where they don't enjoy it just so they can take a picture saying, I was there. We all want our lives to look better than they really are, which is okay if you're you know, not a follower of Jesus, but if you're a follower of Jesus, that is a problem. And it results in two things. It results in joyless, powerless Christians. Okay, You can't joyfully follow Jesus if you're afraid of being discovered. Let me say that again. You cannot, I cannot joyfully follow Jesus if we are afraid that people are going to find out who we really are. Right? If we're trying to cover it up, hide it, so that people don't know us, then we're spending all of our energy hiding and we're not spending our energy living in freedom. Uh, you know, that's why a lot of the churches I was a part of lacked joy. Because they just were too busy, you know, being afraid to celebrate. And then the other damage, the other problem uh, with this, or the other uh, cause of this, is that when we live our lives hiding it damages the testimony of Jesus. Okay, it damages the testimony of Jesus. Let me just put it this way. The, uh, look, unchurched people believe that the church is filled with hypocrites. hypocrites. You guys have heard it too. Okay, good. I'm not the only one. And, and here's the thing. Uh, often they're correct. Often they're right because if we're you know, trying to look better than we are, we go home and live different lives than we're living when we're at church, then what, you know, if we're saying one thing and we're doing another, then what are we? <laughs> Hypocrites. And they're right, and, and they don't really want to come and be a part of the church that we're part of. Uh, and so, you know, it's, it's a problem if we're trying to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. And since we are trying to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus, Calvary's solution to this problem is to embrace the value of transparent living. Transparent living. We believe that God desires us to be real, open, and honest about who we are and allow others to do the same. Okay, I know that's kind of long. Transparent living. God desires that we, you know, are real, open, and honest about who we are and allow other people to be real, open, and honest about who they are. All right, and, and that's the, the, the atmosphere that we want to create. This is our second core value that we're talking about uh, in our About Us series. So, and we can do this, okay? This is how we can do this. This is how we can live transparently. This is how we can be real, open, and honest about ourselves and allow others to do the same. We can do this because we know that we are sinners. We know that we're sinners. And by the way, we know that you are too. Right? I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. And because we know this, we can live transparently. The Bible tells us we're sinners. All throughout Scripture, it makes it really known to us. And, and so the Bible proves that it's accurate. So we need to walk in the light. 1 John chapter 1, verses 7 through 9. Just these three verses. This is what the Apostle John says to us. But if we walk in the light as God is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay, God invites us to walk in the light as he is in the light. And if we do that, then he says we're going to have fellowship with one another. We're going to have unity and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all of our sins. If we say we don't have sin, if we say that we're not a sinner, then we're a liar and the truth is not in us. I've met a few people 
who live that out. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and purify us of all unrighteousness. And, and the truth is this. We don't want to walk in the light because the light exposes our sin. Okay, let me say that again. We, even those of us who believe in Jesus, we resist walking in the light because the light reveals our sin. Jesus said it too. John 3, 19. The light has come into the world and people love the darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. He's talking about himself. You want to know they didn't like Jesus? Because Jesus was the light. He wants us to be the light. And he said, but men preferred the darkness to the light. Why? Because their deeds are evil. Because they want to hide. They don't want to be seen. And yet Jesus exposes our sin. God exposes our sin. And so we've got to be real, open, and honest about who we are so that others can do the same. But we are natural-born children of darkness. Jesus calls us to walk in the light. And here's the thing. If we walk in the light, we find freedom and power, and we disarm the accusations of hypocrisy about our church because we can't control what other churches do. Does that sound appealing? Okay, some of you, yes. Yes. Does that sound terrifying? <laughs> Some of you, yes. <laughs> you know, look, if you're still trying to hide, if you're still hoping people don't hear your story, find out about you, then it is terrifying. So how do we get to this place of transparent living? If you're sitting there going, I want, that sounds appealing. How do I get there? What do I need to do? All right, two choices that we all have to make. Now, again, not just once, but you gotta keep making them uh, if you wanna live uh, transparently. The first choice is confession. Transparent living requires confession, okay? It just, it, it's an absolute. Because confession is at the heart of following Jesus. The Apostle Paul in Romans 10, 9 said, if we confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. It, your, your relationship with Jesus begins with a confession. Jesus is my Lord. Okay, we just read 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay, so confession is at the heart of following Jesus. And by the way, confession is being honest about who you are before God and asking him to forgive and save you. That's what we mean by confession. So have you done this? Have you confessed? Okay, some of you have, some of you haven't. That's okay. That's why we're here. See, if you haven't admitted that you are a sinner and surrendered to Jesus as Lord of your life, then you are just being religious. I'm going to say that again. If you have not confessed that you're a sinner and asked Jesus to save you, you're just being religious. And we don't want you to be religious. It's powerless. It's frustrating. It's not joyful. And, and Today, we want to invite you to step into the light. If that describes you, if you're just here because you want, you know, to try to be a good person and you've never invited Jesus to change your life, then uh, we just want to invite you to do that. Okay, we, we, all you have to do is just kind of go, okay, Jesus, I've messed up and I'm going to hell and I know that and I need you to save me. And, and I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I surrender my life to you. And you're done. You don't have to keep listening to me. You can talk to God right now and pray that. And, and here's the thing. If you're interested in doing that or if you just did that as I'm talking, uh, help us out. We'd love to talk with you about that. Fill out a Connect card. Put on there, I just trusted Jesus. I want to talk to a pastor. We'll, we'll call you this week. Or come and talk to the prayer team at the end of the service. They're up here at the front, across the front. They'd love to pray with you, talk with you, celebrate with you. Or come find one of the pastors. We would love to talk with you and hear your story and celebrate with you. Now, if you are a follower of Jesus, if you believe that Jesus is the one and only Son of God and Savior of the world, and you believe that he died on the cross to pay for your sins, and you believe that he was raised from the dead, and you know that you have made a commitment to follow Jesus with your life, then um, you have confessed your sins to God. And that's wonderful. But have you told anyone else? And when I say that, a lot of places like churches I grew up in, they go, we don't have to tell anyone else. All we have to do is confess to God. Did you read 1 John 1, 9? See, I grew up in churches that were hiding, and so they loved 1 John 1, 9. They adored that verse. See, all I have to do is confess to God. 
They made a mistake in teaching me because they kept encouraging me to read the Bible. <laughs> I am so thankful that they encouraged me to read the Bible. Um, but here's the thing, James 5, 16, James, half-brother of Jesus, you know, he's an apostle, he, and, he, and he writes in, in chapter 5, uh, confess your sins to one another and pray for each other that you may be healed. Confess your sins to one another. We don't like that. Pray for each other that you may be healed. Could hiding be one of the causes of our unhealth? See, I'm, I'm just throwing that out because if, if freedom is found in being honest with God, yourself, and other people, and we're just living two of the three, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. And, and um, see here, and, and I know some of you are like, ah, I don't know about this. I don't know if it's about telling other people my stuff. Uh, see, here's the best part. When we confess, when we confess, not just to God, not just to ourselves, but to uh, someone else, it sets us free because we're no longer trying to hide. Okay, I mean, it changes the dynamic on everything because if somebody goes, yeah, I know you did that, and you're like, yeah, I already told everybody. <laughs> so what? You're just a small-minded person who's trying to attack me. Right? I mean, isn't that, it changes the dynamic when we confess. So look, and, and, and I get it because I hate admitting my failures. Anybody hate admitting your failures? Yeah. Does anybody love admitting their failures? So yeah, see, I, I, don't, I don't love it. But, but see, it's better to admit your failures than to fear being discovered. Don't you think about this. It's better to admit your failures than to be afraid that people are going to find out. So uh, 12 years ago, my wife and I failed financially. Now, actually, we suffered the consequences of failing financially for about 20 years. Uh, we'd already repented by then, but we failed financially. And, uh, and so I shared that with the church on a weekend just like this, just to all the services. It's so much fun. Hey, you think it's fun to confess to somebody? Try doing it four times to crowds of people. <laughs> okay, and, and, and here's the crazy thing. Some of our leaders, when I shared with them, they go, you don't need to tell everybody. You don't need to tell everybody. I go, oh yeah, I do. Because we live in a small town and I don't want somebody to come and go, I know what happened to you. And I was like, I'm gonna tell them first. <laughs> I'm gonna confess, because God's already forgiven me, but I'm gonna confess so that you guys can know, so nobody goes, oh, guess what? If somebody comes up and goes, guess what Pastor Chad did? They go, yeah, you know, he told us. He did? Yeah, in church, like with crowds of people. See, it, it, it's, look, I, I don't like that, but I want to be real, open, and honest. And I know a lot about following Jesus, but when it came to money, I was a moron. Say, so Dave, Dave Ramsey helped me to repent. So if you're sitting here going, I'm a money moron too, uh, we have a life group called Financial Peace University where you can take that and Dave Ramsey can help you to repent too and put your life back together financially. It's a wonderful thing. So now we live debt free uh, except for our mortgage and uh, we're working on that. So uh, anyway, and you can sign up for it right out there in the foyer, right after the service or online, Financial Peace University. I'm just telling you, it's worth the investment. So what are you afraid people will discover about you. Tell your neighbor. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> see, I know some of, some of you would be like, oh, okay, I'm good with that. Um, see, here's the thing. Uh, whatever it is, I want you to know that we are not afraid of your mess. We're not afraid of your failure. We're not afraid of your struggles. We're not afraid of how you've blown it in life. Because the truth is, we absolutely have more people at Calvary that are more messed up than you. Okay, I'm just telling you, we've got stories of God's redemption that we celebrate because we, they've told their stories. You've heard it if you come to Calvary at length of time. You've heard some of those stories and, and they tell about their failures and they talk about how God has redeemed them and they're living the path of redemption now. And that's what we celebrate. See, in, in the churches I grew up in, people were afraid to tell their story of life change because people would judge them for their failures. Here at Calvary, we celebrate your life change. And so we're not embarrassed by your failures because we're too busy celebrating God's goodness and the way he redeems us from our failures. See, that's the cool part. 
So, and, and look, if it makes you feel any better, we already know you're evil. All right, I know that, that hurts some of you, but the Bible says so. There's none righteous, not even one. Uh, and, and I know because I know my own heart. By the way, Jeremiah 17, he was a prophet, so he, he was used to giving bad news. But Jeremiah 17 says, our heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Yay. <laughs> right? Your heart, my heart are, de you know, deceptively wicked and, all the, and, and desperately sick. I, you know, I, I, sorry, I love that. But, but if, so if somebody tells you to follow your heart, just slap them. Okay, if they look at you and go, oh, just follow your heart. Go, you do not know my heart. You do not know the word of God. The word of God says, do not follow your heart. Follow Jesus, okay? He will not lead you to destruction. But see, we know you're evil. And, and look, I, as, your, as your pastor, I hate saying that I know you're evil, but here's how I know you're evil. I know my own heart. I know what's in my heart that is deceptively wicked above all things, right? So I, I know that it's filled with pride and, and with greed and with envy and with lust. That's why I have covenant eyes on my devices. And, and, and I know it's filled with, you know, gluttony and laziness and sloth and all these other things that are there and I just kind of go, if I'm this evil, I just assume you're half as evil as me. And you know what that makes you? <laughs> evil. That's what it makes you, disgustingly evil, all right? So I I'm just saying. So we all know it, so go ahead and confess. And by the way, Calvary's a safe place. It's a safe place to confess, to repent, to grow and build a redeemed life. And that's a life that is free and powerful. And if you don't know how to start that, then Monday nights, 6.30 in this room, we have a ministry called Celebrate Recovery that is helping lots of people discover that freedom. Or maybe you need to sign up for the life group Forgiven and Set Free. Or, or maybe you need to, you know, go see a counselor. We partner with a lot of counselors in our community. Or maybe you just need to schedule an appointment with one of our pastors and share your story. <laughs> you know, uh, I would love to take you to lunch and hear your story. I tell people that all the time. They go, yeah, we'll do that. And they never call and make the appointment. So I know you're avoiding me. And, and I get it, because you're not ready to be there yet. And I don't like, like dra drag it. Well, I do drag it out of you. But anyway, the... Uh, I just want to know how God has redeemed your life so we can celebrate that. And, and uh, so that's just an invitation for me or any of the pastors. We would love to hear your story and help you move in this path of confession because transparent living requires confession and it needs community. Transparent living thrives in community. Thrives in community. If you want to succeed in transparent living, you won't want to do it alone. You really can't do it alone. You see, we all need community. We need people around us who we can be real, open, and honest with, and they can be real, open, and honest with us. We need people around us who love Jesus and who love us and who are gonna encourage us to walk in the light as he is in the light. You see how that works? Proverbs 13 says, whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools suffers harm. Uh, I've heard it said, Show me your friends, and I'll show you your future. The Apostle Paul put it a little more bluntly in 1 Corinthians 15 when he said, don't be deceived, bad company corrupts good morals. So here's the thing. We want every single believer here at Calvary to have unchurched friends that you are doing life with so that you can lead them to that life-changing relationship with Jesus. But we also want every single believer at Calvary to be a part of a life group so that you are surrounded by people who love Jesus like you do and are gonna encourage you to, to keep seeking Jesus and following Jesus and loving Jesus, okay? That, that's, that's how this will work so that you can have those friends that need Jesus but you're not gonna let them lead you astray because you have those friends that love Jesus and you're walking with. So my life group is made up of my friends. And they know me, and they love me, and they accept me. By the way, not as pastor, but as Chad. 
You know, we hang out, we laugh, we cry, we pray, we support each other, encourage each other to live in the light. And we celebrate our successes and grieve our losses and uh, we love and encourage each other along the way. And it's funny, I had somebody one time say, oh, are you going on vacation? I bet you really let your hair down when you go on vacation. And I go, no, I do exactly the same thing I do right here in Havasu because I travel with Calvary. I mean, my life group, you know, we travel together. It's like, I'm not going away. I'm not trying to hide from them. I'm just doing life with them. By the way, it's not really transparent living if nobody sees you. And, and here's a final thought. We need to live authentic and transparent lives to accomplish the mission of leading people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. And, and we live in communities where people see us and know us everywhere we go. Okay, you can't hide in Lake Havasu City. By the way, I like that accountability. It helps me to be better. And if you live transparently, it'll help you to be better as well because if people know that you're an unashamed Christ follower, then they're gonna be watching you and your life can point them to Jesus in a powerful way. But, but see, if, we're gonna, if we want to lead those unchurched people into a relationship with Jesus, then we have to repent of that hypocrisy. And we need to authentically love people every single place that we go, consistently, day in and day out. And we need to show them the power and joy of living transparently in freedom. They need to see that from me and they need to see that from you. And if they do that, if they see that in our lives and they experience that, not just from the you know, preachers, but from the people uh, of Calvary, it's going to result in life change. That's why we got to baptize 69 people last weekend, because you guys are doing this, and if we do it on a bigger scale, on a better scale, it's gonna have that much more of an impact. But to get there, we need to confess. And we need each other. We need real community. So, um, Will you stop trying to hide? Will you stop fearing discovery? Will you step into freedom and live transparently? Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for loving us. Because you know us. You know every single evil thing that we have thought or said or done and yet you still love us. And you sent Jesus to the cross to demonstrate that love to us while we were sinners. And he paid with his blood for every evil thought and every evil word and every evil action that we have engaged in. And Lord, you've invited us to live in freedom. We can't get there alone. We need your help, but we need each other's help because we need to confess, not just to you, not just to ourselves, but to other people. We need to pray for each other so that we can really be healed. And Lord, we need the community of other believers to help us do this. So we pray that you would meet us in this place. Your Holy Spirit would move uh, in this room and in the homes that are joining us online. And you would speak to us so that we can live differently so that we really can embrace transparent living, so that the mission of Christ at Calvary can be successful and continue to grow. This is our prayer. We ask it in Jesus' name, amen. God desires us to be real, open, and honest about who we are and to allow others to do the same. That's transparent living. Thank you for listening to our message today. We invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel by visiting youtube.com forward slash Calvary LHC and hitting the subscribe button. You'll be notified when we have new content and you'll receive our daily devotionals known as your word for the day. You can also sign up on our homepage at calvaryaz.com. Well, that's all for today. Please join us again next week. Bye-bye.
Are you looking for a way to dive deeper into scripture and make it a part of your daily routine? Check out Calvary's Word for the Day daily devotional videos. Visit calvaryaz.com forward slash D-E-V-O and sign up to receive these three to five minute devotionals right to your inbox each day. Our team of pastors and leaders share meaningful insights from the Bible to equip and encourage you in your faith journey. Don't miss out on this opportunity to grow in your relationship with God and connect with the community of believers. Sign up today and start receiving your daily dose of scripture.